Hey guys, it's your boy friends, and welcome back to my FIFA 17 Liverpool career mode where last time off the off, I made a very a good start to the second season in, in my Liverpool career mode with, with wins over for West Ham and Bournemouth. In this episode, you can see I'm yeah, going into the Capital World Cup for the first time in season two. And first up, this is Wigan. So let's play against, shall we? Also, I hope you are enjoying Black Friday. <coughs> For what it's worth, I couldn't give a rat. Cup tie time in the English League Cup. And I can sense the extra buzz amongst the supporters as we came into the stadium. Wigan Athletic play Liverpool. Check for you. This is a uh, focus on mm. winning some games, shall we? We are not what colour Friday day it is. Excellent header, probably deserved a bit better from it. Yeah, he's one of the best headers of the ball in this league, I think. I thought I might get an uh, intercept that, but uh, not to be. Acceleration as much as just that. Unfortunately, oh, yeah. Flat-footed when he's uh, got a mind to it. Exactly. Won the ball cleanly. There was it. Progress with this attack. Origi. And shoots! Osho! Reflection. Picks it way off course. Origi! Why? Oh, but it took a deflection or something. Maybe it wasn't Origi's ever at all. That is definitely a goal kick though. Really? Just let the ball to his mate and got it back again. Got the tackle in. Oh, he could be in. That's a bad foul. Come on, give him a yellow. I don't think he even gave him a yellow. And he can't get it. Oh, Alexander Arnold, though. What a free kick. What's a goal as well? That's the the fourth free kick I've scored. And already it took me months to score a one free kick in FIFA 16. In in only a few months I scored but four. That's two I've scored with Alexander Arnold. Oh, I took a deflection off on some dude's head. That's what really why it's gone in. Oh no, it hit his shoulder. It looked like it hit his head in the uh, first replay. So the first goal it hit like the uh, shoulder blade of him. It's given as uh, Alexander Arnold's goal, so it must, it must have been going in regardless. The fact that the uh, keep uh, uh, that's what he'd like to see again. The back heel was barely up. Able to, unable to keep it out with the deflection. Says he probably wouldn't have gotten there if it hadn't taken a deflection. So, uh, probably be 1 0 anyway. The referee spotted that deflection, he's pointed to the corner.
Moya strength keeper. With that touch, came in with the challenge, and the ball broke free. Jordi Gomez, Liverpool leading, but it's a pretty slender margin at this stage. We've got half time coming up, and they want to get there with this lead still intact. And he's used his head there to keep his side in possession. Well, oh, yeah, he might sit up yeah, for Ojo 2 0. Very little defensive resistance from uh, Wigan there. Or as if they didn't fucking care. Because of weird. Hey, I'll take it. Shit, 2 0. Fantastic. Restarting at 2 0. Morgan. I'm just fucking bullying the Wigan players here. <laughs> now Good to see your team. I don't so. Is it uh, controlling again? Him? Patience is the name of the game at the moment. Because I'm not actually bullying. Them. I am. Um, Definitely against that sort of stuff. Good action in the English League Cup in the first 45 minutes. Second half starts now. I think one or two players surprised us actually how well they played in that. Exactly. Right. We've got his fist to it. Clever eye. Why did I go for that? Why? <laughs> Freaking. I scored a free kick and suddenly I've got the biggest lot of confidence in the fucking world. The goal was something crazy. That's not cr You see that wall? That was a great ball in. The defender got it away. Although Moya almost turned it in. Riggy! Oh, his first touch wasn't so terrible. Fucking hell, yay. Seriously. Throw in for Liverpool. I've never touched the sliders. There's, but if I ever did, I would go straight for the one on first touch control just to alleviate some of this bullshit that randomly happens I know it's supposed to be unrealistic but it gets so annoying when you know oh it's probably prevented a clear goal oh like it probably did there with a read of course I will never use sliders but that's not the point I'm trying to get across but the Wara makes it unnecessary to use sliders. I mean, look at that. That is fantastic. That's that is two really good goals. Well, saying that Shea Ojo's goal is not exactly something to be sneezed at. It's not a bad finish, but that is just fantastic. Curled it in, in, in like nobody's business. Given them a comfortable. Thank you very much. Pitch. Morgan. Challenges for the ball. Nice bit of footwork from the attacker. Rigi, 4 0. Great goal. Rigi only scored a handful of goals last season. So it's good to have gotten him off the mark because. He's going to need that confidence boost, especially considering, like I said, he did only score a few goals last season. Technically, you could say that was down to the fact that he did get injured pretty early in the season. Uh, they're looking for more at 4-0. By the time he got back, 
there wasn't enough games left for him to get a respectable goal return. Although, say if you looked at his goal return and compared to matches played, eh? and it was probably he he good. I'd say it was uh, one in every two games. Maybe I can't I remember the exact stats. Been the perfect day really for the Reds, and there's not too long left in this match now. Just a quick check on the clock, and there are 20 minutes to go. Put him under pressure. Oh. Well away from the danger zone. Clava. Some potential in this move. Oh, the header. Moya. He's got his shot off now. Oh, I was going to say first when I hit that first time, but that actually went surprisingly close. Because, you know, Rigi's. Oh. Look, look. Why is it, it in replays? It always looks a lot. Worse miss than it looked in a first viewing. Here's the cross, and he's up for the header. Is that something EA added to make you look like an ass? Because if it is, I don't particularly like it. How about that goal for sheer class? Well, he could have uh, really that. makes it 5 0. Dominating performance. Just. just Finish top marks five nil and the game under brilliant. Sometimes, you know what? I'm so confident, I'm so oh, in control here. We can make some substitutions. Let's let's do that. Freaking Alan Cow. Well, and Fayor are all coming on. Also, how weird is this to have two players named Fayor, both from France? I'm not even kidding. What are the fucking chances? I had something similar like that last year as well. I had two players with the same name, him, both from the same country. It was weird. It was like. I often thought, are they related in some way? Because how many of the I mean, is it possible to have two? I mean, I suppose so. I mean, and he's combined well with his teammates, and when he's had to, he my my Peters in the world. I'm not related to any of them. Not. I'm. I have relatives. Here and some in Australia. And when I say here, I mean in Ireland where I live. I don't have any relations in America that I know of. I don't have any relations in, in any country like that that I know of. Well, the injured player has gone off. That dude got hurt on his own fault because he fell down trying to bite. Origi's ass. Not sure why he tried to bite Origi's ass, but he did. <laughs> At least that's what it looked like he was trying to fucking do. The shot's on. I know what will happen in training, Alan. They'll do that for him and show him what an awful miss it was. I don't think he'd be rushing home to watch the highlights tonight. Well, this attack got a bit of menace to it. The final whistle from the referee. Champions Cup. Bayer Leverkusen 3, Lech Poznan 0. Olympiakos 3, Dundalk 0. Villa Real 4, Rangers 1.
English. Whoa. Look at that. In the uh, new section, the hands leaving Manchester United. Finally, some goddamn realism from this game. Because let's be honest. On penalties. He is probably hanging by a fucking thread. Come on, Manchester United fans. You you know it. You know it. As soon as the only reason the hair is still around is Mourinho. Bristol City won. If Mourinho, for some reason, is not a Manchester United come the summer, the hair will be moving to someone like a Barcelona or a Real Madrid or a Juventus. Some big team where he can get regular Champions League football. Because his, he is a very good player and that is pretty that is kinda what he deserves. There's no shame in making that. And unless Mourinho gets United in the top four. If United don't finish in the top four this season, Mourinho will probably be sacked. I mean, the Manchester United board might be looking for him to win the title this season. And might be why they spent so much on Pogba. But they would at least want top four if they... If for some reason, you know, I didn't win the title, which at the moment doesn't look like it. Not with the way teams like Manchester City, Chelsea, and Arsenal are playing. I wouldn't include Liverpool in that, but I just know. I know it's, it takes one game and Liverpool's form goes out the fucking window. And that could be, be fucking tomorrow when we play Sunderland. That would be. Just like us, to be honest. Been unbelievable throughout the season. And then we go out against a team like Sunderland and we're fucking terrible. Like, we've never played football all the night before. Or, uh, and they'll fucking just steamroll us. That is exactly... That, that is the kind of thing you can offer. <laughs> I, 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 it's not happened... As much as it probably would have in past seasons yet this season, it's only happened once against Burnley. I guess you could say it happened against United and Southampton, but I guess a draw is a better than. Here comes the cross. Two draws are better than two defeats. And he could get away here. I mean, it might have been two defeats if Manchester United and Southampton showed any interest in actually he testing in Carrius. I mean, although Southampton had a few shots, Manchester United just didn't bother. Oh, shots fired. And I don't give a shit because Manchester United fans, if they are and they subscribe to me, fuck off. I don't want you. You subscribe to me. I I, I will perf I will do perfectly fine without you. In fact, I will do better without you. If for whatever reason you are subscribed to me, just just leave. If I could ban you, I would. But I don't know who, who, who any of you sub support. Any of you who support Spurs, you might not want to watch this video the way it's going because I am on fire so far. The Hood and Daniel Sturridge have made it 2 0 already. Lloris, he's another one who, who. It might take one bad season for Spurs if. I, I think Lloris might end up leaving Spurs if they get like a big offer from them. Again, a Real Madrid or a Barcelona or a Juventus, there are teams who 
would look at Hugo Lloris and say, yes, please. I mean, Spurs are out of the Champions League. That's got to be worrying if you're a Spurs fan. To get into the Champions League is hard enough. But the fact that they couldn't stay in it is worrying. Christian Eriksen. To be honest, it might be the fact that they don't have the squad depth. And while. Here's what I mean by that. Harry Kane missed. What was it? Two, maybe three matches because of his injury? And Jensen was the best. And Jensen was the striker that played. And well, I mean, maybe Jensen will come good, maybe he won't. But Harry Kane, over the past two seasons, has got or near 50 goals. If I think I think he actually has 51, 52 goals in the past two seasons because he scored 20 plus in both. And if he can stay healthy, I wouldn't put past him getting 20 again this season, regardless of where Spurs finish. And here comes the counter attack. He, I mean, he's another one who uh, big money might uh, lure away. It's just the way of the of the uh, game of football as it is. If you have a player who can impress, a team will look at and say, "We could use him." Oh, it's an end of the situation for them. Should be home and hosed. A good luck here. And I'm trying to think of what big teams might want Harry Kane. I mean, Harry Kane is a very good player, but I mean, big teams like Real Madrid and Barcelona have better players, unfortunately. I mean, when, I mean, Suarez and Ronaldo are the strikers, are the main strikers, along with guys like Karim Benzema, better uh, a player. Lionel Messi could play striker for Barcelona if they wanted. Hell, they could play Neymar there. Yeah. And it's and they'd fucking dominate. And I mean, everywhere you look, there are teams who would probably look at Harry Kane and say, "No, yeah, he could be a good shout," but. Chances are they have a better player already. Like Bayern Munich have Robert Lewandowski. But what Spurs might want to be worried about is other Premier League teams. Teams like Manchester City. I mean. Pep Guardiola might look at. They've been very good, the team that are leading, of course. And uh, his team and say, you know what? I need more goals. And say, and someone might say to him, one of his uh, assistants or someone might say, uh, Harry Kane has 50 plus goals in the past two, two seasons, and he's got a good few goals this season, and he's missed, and he has. Missed a few games of injury, and he still has a good few goals. Pep Guardiola might think, "Oh look at it!" Terrific stop. And that is something. If you're a Spurs fan, if I was a Spurs fan, I would be worried about. I mean. Some Liverpool fans are worried about Coutinho, but I'm not. Because I, I don't think Coutinho is going to... As long as Jurgen Klopp is at Liverpool and doing well, I think Coutinho will, will, will be out. The uh, plan. I mean, if it starts going downhill... 
Maybe Coutinho might consider it, but I he's all the players seem to be having the fucking time of their life. I mean, you can see it any time Liverpool score a goal. Oh, I mean, players look happy when they score goals anyway. It's, they just look like they're having fun. It looks like they're playing because they want to have fun. Their professionals get paid loads. And there are players who generally, even when they score lots of goals, they, they look happy, but they don't look like they're having fun. They're like, ah, it's just another day at the office. But the Liverpool players, I'm not, I'm not trying, I'm not saying this just because they're Liverpool players. They generally do look like they're having the time of their fucking life. And I think as long as Jurgen Klopp is around, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe he a big money move would convince Coutinho to move away. Who knows? I generally think, but Jurgen Klopp, I think he is having the time of his life. I mean, Coutinho is probably in the best form of his career. And that man as well, Emre Chan. Emre Chan has a few goals this season in real life. Emre Chan is a defensive midfielder. He shouldn't be scoring a few goals this season, but he does. He has them. And he tributes it. He even said it. It's because of Jurgen Klopp. He said, Jurgen, the way Jurgen Klopp plays him and uses him in the team is how, why he's playing so good. I mean, Adam Lallana, every all of us Liverpool fans, let's let's be honest, we were all saying, oh, Lallana is useless under uh, Brendan Rodgers. Lallana was, we were all wanting Lallana out. We didn't want any bit of Lallana. He was terrible. Dejan Lovren was terrible. They've become good players, seemingly under Klopp. They, he's seemingly turned them into good players. And you're just like, hang on, who, are these the same players? I mean, he's turned James Milner into one of the best left-backs in the Premier League. James Milner is a central midfielder. He should not be one of the best left-backs in the Premier League. And don't tell me he's not one of the best left-backs in the Premier League. Because the man works his fucking ass off. I mean, the best left back in the Premier League is probably, right now, probably Danny Rose, who's ironically with Spurs, but James Miller would be up there. What could Tottenham do now in these closing stages? Well, I think we're going to see some, some move one stuff here, Martin, in the next few minutes. He is just playing unreal. The fact that he is keeping, uh, well, he says he's down as a legit left back, but... I don't fucking believe it because left backs are supposed to know how to defend, which, which he severely lacks in in Alberto Moreno. So, uh, yeah, I don't know if he is a legit left back, but he's supposed to be, and yet he's being kept out of the team. He's being kept out of the first team by a a, a thirty-five, I think. I think. He's a 34 or 35 year old central midfielder playing out of his position but playing like a man possessed. Miller has put in as good performances a left back for us as he has throughout his career. I mean, this sounds like I'm just trying to big up Liverpool. I'm not. I'm just praising the players who under the Jurgen Klopp has seemingly come to life and have changed who the fuck they are. They were somebody else, they were who they originally were, and now they're somebody completely different. I mean, if you told me before Jurgen Klopp showed up that Adam Lallana would turn into one of our key players, I would have called you a fucking liar and just disregarded whatever hell you, else you had to say. He, and you were also saying, ah, uh, James Milner's going to become our best left back. Our first choice left back. He's going to be better than that. Moreno, sure. Mm -hmm. Whatever, crazy bastard. But you had been right. 
I would have been wrong for calling you a crazy bastard. So that is crazy. And that is the power of a good manager. Yeah. And a team playing in form. I didn't mean for that to become all about Liverpool. What was I talking about? Doesn't matter. <laughs> I will... That is going to be the end of this episode. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoy. Smash the like button if you did. Subscribe if you're new. Sorry I talked about Liverpool. Oh, for the last 15 minutes or so. So yeah. Until next time, I hope you all have a very, very nice day. Peace.